sun is a fairy. Oh, let's meet the sun again. I like sun. She's around. Pentim is around. Nice. Let's have some. And Pentium is welcome too. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm not bad. Not bad. Yes. I I heard you talking, but I don't have much information about your businesses. Uh huh. But I do like to talk to humans now and then. Uh huh. I talked to you a long time ago. Right. But I was at your house. Uh huh. So it was it was very interesting that I'm now at this house. Well, it's warm out, so we can travel a little faster. Really? Yeah. Well, warm? we don't... The cold is fine. The cold is fine. We don't... It's not that bad, but it's easier without snow and all that stuff. You know, uh -huh. All those things, you can't do it with as fast. So, how was that time? Is, you, is the time in your space going as well as similar as in our space? Or your time is different? Our time is about your time. We are created for your time. Oh. So, yes, our time is all about your time, and your time is rough. This is a rough time for humanity. It's a rough time for the Earth. The Earth is having a lot of adjustments, oh. because the last 50 years has been very hard on the Earth. In very many ways. In the air, and in the ground, and in... Um, the water, all the, all those things, and animals and um, plants and trees and bushes have to adapt. And it's not always easy because they have a slower metabolism. Some of them do, like trees have a slower metabolism, so they don't adapt as quickly. Uh -huh. So to help them adapt, we have to clear out all this, anything that's not natural around the roots because whenever they reach up into the sky they hit the pollution in the air so and they can breathe what's in this in the air too so you know that so they get polluted and some of them are dying and that's what happens to some of the bees and things they just got polluted with some of the things that are in the plants and the bushes and the flowers they got polluted so we had to clean out areas so that they wouldn't get polluted. But it's hard to do the air. We can't do the air. Oh. We can do the air a little bit, but not as much as that we would like to. We can't get that high up in the air. If the pollution comes down, we can get rid of it. But if it's way up in the high in the air, we can't get rid of it. So there is billions of trees, and there is not that many of you. So how can you clean that much. We're fast. But only certain things need to be cleaned. So you don't have to clean everything, only the stuff that's not good. And sometimes there's there's areas in the world where things are very good, but there are areas in the world that things are very bad. So, so I guess India and China are your most concerned, Mexico. Yes. Well, why do you think that up in the in Russia where they had that big uh, meltdown thing, why do you think the animals are doing so well? Why do you think the in, there's still insects and stuff? It only affects humans, pretty much. Uh -huh. Because we've helped them adapt so fast. We've helped them because we've cleaned out some of that stuff that really affects animals and plants and things. Well, some plants still can't grow there. But, um, but we have helped a lot up there. Even though there's a lot of radiation, the animals are still fine, and they are not coming down with cancerous things. Huh. If you would study that, you would huh. understand that. But, um, yes, it's we help as much as we can. That's why more trees have not died. 
We could not help some. Some were polluted by the air with a mass pollution in the air, higher in the air. Uh, it fell on them, sort of. Mm. Sort of thing. So that's what keeps you busy? Very much. Very much busy. What good is happening? What is happening where? Oh, in your life, what good is happening? Oh, good things are also happening, yes. Well, the bees have returned in some, I mean, in we've moved some bees around so that it, it's made, it's better now. So that's a good thing, and they are starting to live again. We've taken away the, you see, they create honey, which is a, one of the greatest things on the earth that can be made, and it's rare, because it has things in it that, can't be duplicated, so um, bees are very important. So we were working with the bees for a long time. So I have a, a nest of uh, striped jackets. Bees? Yellow jackets. Yellow jackets. Yes in my house and we are selling the house and moving away so the new owners I guess will extinguish them, will call the exterminators and exterminators. Yes, yellow jackets are not in danger. There is many of them around. They are probably one of the most hardy of the species. So it is not, it is not real upsetting for someone to eliminate a colony of them. but. Um, Honeybees are very precious. In any case, if you have a communication with these yellow jackets, tell them, you know, maybe they would live peacefully. Oh, yes, yes, I know where they um, Actually, we can ask them to move out, but they don't have to if they don't want to. So, we'll ask them. Just pause them. I mean, they, will be, they will be treated whenever they come out. That's no question. Well, if they move then they won't get harmed. We will yes. let them know. Yep. But sometimes they are stubborn. Yeah. But because they like their location or there's so much things there that they like, mm -hmm. it's close to things that they are very happy with and they have looked elsewhere and not found anything, so bees are very temperamental. Mm -hmm. So I walk around that uh nice wild forest nearby and they cut their uh, trails using garden scissors or how they call trimmer or whatever mm -hmm. scissors and I just was surprised how many prickly bushes are there prickly interesting bushes. and I just realized why I like trees and most of the trees they are not prickly they have their how they call it the word their whatever and then they grow out above but humans can walk down below right stem they have a stem yes and um, yes, yes. and the bushes the bushes are just the other way around They're prickly <laughs> and right on the way of humans yes they are nature's way of protecting things <laughs> in russia we don't in the russia well, we, see, we live around the briars and the bushes so people don't inhabit our areas, so uh -huh. we put bushes and briars around us, why not? It We can go through them easily and other people are like, ooh, briars and bushes, we don't... How do you go through the briars and bushes? We're just used to it. Once you get used to them, they don't hurt you. Your skin oh. is... We're made for Earth. You don't go through, you just go around? No, yeah, we go through them. Oh, you... We just, they just don't bother us. We have it, we have, it's it's a mental thing. If you say a bush is not going, it's like walking on your hot coals or whatever. If you say that it's not going to bother you, if it's mind over matter, just go right through. <laughs> so we just go right through them, but we know that humans don't like them. So we put them around and it's just like, we can, we can do our thing without even, even worrying about bushes. We just walk right through them. They don't hurt us. All right. Making the trails, would it be good for nature or bad for nature? 
because humans will look around and this will be nice humans who like Well, the places eat. that you're making trails has no bearing on us or no bearing on anything. People can walk around. They're not going to be hunting. They're not going to be um, doing anything destructive. So it doesn't matter. We'd stop you if, it, if it's an area that we wanted to stop you. Uh -huh. You would run into something that you couldn't go any farther. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah, but the area you're doing in is non-vital. Oh, um, what else is happening in your life? Do you have families and friends? Of course we have families and friends. Actually, the population of the elemental population, as you call it, has actually grown in the last several years because we need more. Oh. And so we asked for a growing population, and it was, it was done. Yes, and it, it continues to grow. Um, we once only had a few hundred elementals on the earth. Now there's thousands. So thousands. Yeah, but still, that's not enough. And what kinds are there? There's elves, and there's fairies, and there's wood nymphs, and there's um, those are the kinds we deal with mostly. And um, there are some trolls, but they're not very many. Uh huh. How about gnomes? Gnomes, trolls, gnomes and trolls sort of hang together. They still dig for gold and stuff? Um, they're the alchemists of the elementals. They try to make gold. They try to bring gold. They try to find gold. But they're other, they have other things that they do as well. Trolls and, uh, and gnomes and things are protective of uh, the larger animals. Ah. So. And what's the difference between elves and fairies? Fairies are, can fly. All right. And functionally, what's the difference? What do, what's the different thing you do? Well, if you can fly, you can do things in a higher attitude, altitude. So you, so we're like, if there's bees in in the trees. Uh -huh. and things of that nature, we can help out with that kind of thing. And if, if there's an animal that's a tweed, tree dweller, yes, we can help with them too. And also the larger, the higher branches, sometimes we can clean them off if they get too dirty. Uh -huh. So, but the elves are more ground. They're, they're the ground team. Uh -huh. We help with the ground as well. Because the ground is very important. But, but we also help with the higher things. If someone points out something that's in a higher realm than just like three feet off the ground, then we can work on that. I get it. In appearance, are you much different from elves? Yeah, we look different. We have wings. So... Yeah, we look a little different. We're a little bit thinner, a little bit more. Uh, our noses are a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, we we uh, seem to be a little bit shorter. You know, just for the flying thing. We're a little bit less heavy. How about tooth fairies? Are there any tooth fairies? There's no tooth fairies. Uh, really? No, there's no tooth fairies. I mean, some trolls collect teeth, but I don't think that you would want to call them tooth fairies. Can't you come up with a tooth fairy team? People, kids like, like that idea very much. Yeah, but what are we doing with it? We don't need your teeth. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> But it is something, like, you know. Yeah, we can make a collection, I guess, but you, I'm not sure. <laughs> it just doesn't sound very very clean. It's not a very clean collection. Unless you really polish those suckers. But, you know, it's it's okay. My kids really like the idea of Tooth Fairy. They still want it to, to exist. I'm ah, sorry. There's no really Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairies? No. So, you, how do you multiply? What kind of families do you have? We have families just like everybody else. But it, it's rare. We don't have the sex drive you have. Ours is just for creating new life. Uh-huh. 
But yours is more... Uh, I don't know. You have f more fun and with it and... Well, we do too sometimes, but not, not as often. So you're... Uh, are you mammals? No. Do you lay eggs? No. We actually... The process of birth is very different than you, than anything else. Elementals have a different way. They they sort of divide in some ways. Uh -huh. um, part of them becomes part of something else. So they will like give part of themselves to a rock or a tree or a plant, uh -huh. and it becomes something unique. Hmm. But yes. There is sexuality. So you have two sexes? Yes. And then there are children? Yes. But we can create in other ways. Uh huh. And your children have the genetic material of father and mother? I don't understand the question. Do Would it have to? Wouldn't it have to? Uh, not necessarily. If you divide, you can, you know, do other ways. Well, we can give some of ourselves to something else and make it into something else. And the children, do you teach, their, you teach your children and the children get experience? Oh, my, yes. They follow us wherever. We, we are always together. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, you work in families? Yes. After the child is born and is about two weeks old, they start coming along everywhere. Uh -huh. We go. Are there elders? Yes, we do have elders. Do you have hierarchical society? Not really hierarchical. What's that word? But anyway, we don't. We do have elders that are are our leaders. Uh huh. And that would be the only other category of existence, I guess. Hi. Because everybody else is equal. How much do you cooperate with elves? Well, we have to cooperate with elves every day. Every day. We have to talk to elves and be with elves and because they are help, so helpful. We've learned to get along very well and use each other's talents to, for the betterment of the earth. In our movies, elves are fighters, are they? Fighting at all? Only if they have to. And fairies? Only if they have to. I see. I mean, what do we have to fight? We there's it's very there's very little to fight, except every now and then a troll. Oh. So you fight trolls? Well, if they get too belligerent, we just slap them upside the head a little bit and they calm down. How much do you communicate with humans? Uh, more now than I ever have. Um, I mean, in the last six months, I've communicated with about five or six humans, so I've learned quite a bit. Was it through channeling or else, somehow else? Um, both channeling and f going into them and listening to their thoughts. Because I've, I'm one of the unusual ones that uh, I do help with all the different things on the earth and things, but I can also uh, be with humans. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't know that until I met you. Uh -huh. But now I've been with other people as well. Nice, nice. And that's where I picked up some of more of my vocabulary. Because uh -huh. I've been with children. I like children a lot. And they say things like stuff and, you know, words that we would never use. Uh -huh. Like the word cool, I, we would say that about the weather. The weather is cool, but they call each other cool. And they call things cool, and I, we, we've learned to, that that means that it's good. Mm -hmm. Or acceptable. Mm -hmm. And other words that, we were, that I'm learning is, you know, like stuff. I never knew what stuff meant. It can mean many things. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting language you have. Very colorful. 
Very happy in times. I try to stay away from unhappy children, though. So, do they see you? Yes, some of them do. How do you appear to them? I am their invisible friend. <laughs> but how do, you, do they see you? Uh, they see me as human looking. They cannot, I don't, I always keep my wings in the back, so they really can't see those unless I turn around. But I try to look as human as possible, so not to frighten them. But the, I look like a very, very small human. What kind of clothes do you wear? I wear, children. I wear a little bit of this and that. I have nutshells that I weave into clothing and things of that nature. Some, some different kinds of dried grasses and uh -huh. leaves that oh. are dried, uh -huh. but very still keep their moisture. Not, any, not like in our cartoons? I did not watch your cartoons. I don't know what your cartoons are like. Can you watch if you want to? I guess. Television has never really interested me very much. It's, it seems very trite. I guess if you... At least what children watch. If you continue speaking to children, it would be nice to see how they imagine fairies, and then you would be able to relate to that somehow. Hmm. Because our fairies and cartoons are very beautiful. And they have a certain character. I wonder if the, yeah. if the character would correspond to your character. Well, we're, we're beautiful in our own way, but I'm not sure that humans would find us beautiful. I mean, we're pleasant looking, but we have extra long noses and we have um, very thin lips. And uh, our hair is just very thin, very thin hair. But we have hair and it's, we let it grow fairly long. Yes, sometimes it gets caught in trees, and, and if we're in a very wooded area, like and the, all the briars and things, we push, pull the hair back and tie it back. Uh -huh. So in our cartoons and movies, the fairies are either girls or teenage age or little older young ladies, and they wear either human dresses or leaves and grass dresses, but they're always very humanized and very beautiful and very playful. I guess our style hasn't really changed much. It depends on your talent of making clothes. Some people's clothes look like they were homemade, mm -hmm. and some people's clothes look like they were tailored. Just like people that you might see walking around with tailored clothes. But it doesn't really matter. We do not judge people by how they look clothing-wise, or facial-wise, or body-wise, we judge them on their work. Are you, are you communicating with ETs? Oh, we know the ETs, yes. They help us, we help them sometimes. It's rare, but we do help each other. If you have to choose who to a partner with, what do you Choose Yael, Pleiadians, or Zetas? Definitely not Zetas. Probably Yuyo. Mm -hmm. And we like the Lyrans and the Pleiadians sometimes, depending on what their needs are. But Yuyo seem to be most Earth interested. Mm -hmm. The others seem to be more mm, human interested. But Yu-Yil also is Earth interested, in which, which we are, of course. So they like to be helpful on the Earth in a way that's different than the others. Yes, mm. there you go. So I'm moving to Chicago, and it is North Center place, North Center town of Chicago. Yes. Um, is there any... Energy Vortex, which you would recommend me to visit and meditate? Mm, I would have to check with others. But the Energy Vortexes around here are obvious. So, uh, the ones in Chicago, we'll have to check for you. It would probably not be too much in the city anymore. Sometimes if, if a city is built on a vortex, it brings it down some. Mm. 
but not in so in some areas, but depending on the people that are there. Mm, how about the beach? What is a big beach line? One moment. The beach would probably have more vortexes than anything, mm -hmm. than any other place. Mm -hmm. There is a vortex, yes. Um, what's the name of the place? I don't know the name of the place. Oh, but it's, there is a vortex right in the middle of Lake Michigan. Not close. I need like, something accessible. And it's a nice big vortex as well. Um... Danita? It, I think it's called Danny Tot. That's what, that's what our people call it. It's near the shore. It's 100 yards within the shoreline, usually. The shoreline changes a little here and there. But it is about 100 yards within the shoreline. They call it Danny Tot Spot. And it is about as big as this room. I've been there a few days ago, and I was in the dog park. Mm -hmm. I think it was Montrose Beach, but I'm not sure. Can you see if I was at that place or not? Did you feel it? Mm. It's pretty strong, you would know. I don't know. Danny Tot's spot is as big as this room, maybe a little bigger, and it is a very strong vortex for positive energy, and it is in a forest, and it is in a dark, it's in the dense part of the forest because the trees grow very dense there. Oh, there are no trees there. No, this, this has some dense trees. All right, that's not Chicago. It's not Chicago. Yeah. They don't have trees around their shore at all? Mm, almost none. Or perhaps around outside of Chicago. Then it wouldn't be a shore. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right. Well, I'm thinking of somewhere. It's called Danny Top Spot. All right. Thank you. I will have someone lead you to it if they can. All right, thanks. If it is actually in Chicago, maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else. But I know it is in dense trees. Okay. Because the trees love it and they grow, they're grow. they growing very well there. Within the area and outside of the area as okay. well. Oh, somebody else wants to come and talk to you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yes. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to go. I will give you a poem which I just uh, oh. composed. It's yes. a short one. Good. Like three lines. Uh, it was in Russian, but it will translate, hopefully. Um, a warm day in November, between naked branches and lonely mosquito. So, brother... You, you too cannot wait. <laughs> I like that. Mosquitoes are my friends. Actually, I think mosquitoes are beautiful. They're just beautiful creatures if you look at them. I think they're very, very beautiful. I like dragonflies as well. I like those too. Some mosquitoes are just beautiful. They have their long snout and everything. Yes, they're beautiful. So, but anyway. I could give you a poem if you want. All right, give me. Let me see if I can translate it into your language. Stems long and green, stretching out and carrying the heavy weight of blossom, and countering the heavy weight of wind, and finding that in the breeze they are but an energy to be dealt with, and from the root they are grounded and happy. But then, sometimes in winter, they lose it all and find themselves a child again, 
waiting to push up through the earth one more time. Nice, thank you. Do you like that? Yes, wonderful. Yes. One more time. Yes. Yes. I will let you go now. I hope I interpreted that right. Sounds, sounds well. Good day. Nice seeing you again. Good day. How are you? Good nature to you. Huh. Oh, good nature to you too. Something I just made up. <laughs>